right, we're gonna let our sanity and everything recover real quick, and then we're gonna head out to this side quest. Check the enhancement text of Moon Knight on your pickaxe. Enjoy 25% yield when mining copper, tin, iron, aluminum, and tungsten with the pickaxe during the day. Doubles to 50% yield at night. Awesome. Okay, that's actually awesome. Cool. I'm impressed that your sanity can be filled while sleeping in the rain. Uh, J-Hops, that's true, but I'm only happy when it rains. So, there's that. I just also say I love the water reflection from the rocks inside of the fish tank. Like double reflection. Love it. Okay, uh, let's go to here. I think we're going to do this area if I haven't. I'm hoping when we get here this time it'll say like, you need to kill one elite and loot the special chest and all that kind of stuff. Because it didn't before since we had the main quest. Oh no, it still doesn't show up. Does this area not have a quest associated with it? This is like the only... I remember there there definitely was one last time. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, well, there you go. That's weird, because this area is super cool. Like, the area is actually awesome. I'm kind of surprised they didn't give you a quest to, like, explore around and get things. Yeah, we're going to be giving away 200 more keys tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be giving away keys every hour while I'm playing this game. We're going to be doing that for the next, like, 20 hours. And then uh, we'll be giving out 200 keys on our token store tomorrow morning. Uh, for 5,000 tokens, if you have enough. We gave out 275 keys today. And we'll give out another 200 tomorrow morning. I hope I'm Get you guys in and playing. Down there. There. Nope. Alright, so I guess since we can't do a quest here, we're just going to go ahead and keep moving for now. I really hope they make it so there's a quest area here, because this area is awesome. I really like this area. I would love reasons to fight here. In fact, wait a second. Wait a second. Isn't this the area where you have to, like, go into the main building and, like, go down into something? Isn't that here? But I didn't have to do any of that. Am I thinking of the right area? Did they remove all that? Because that was actually pretty cool. Oh, that's, that's not this one. Okay. How do you see how many tokens you have? Just go to coalition.com and log in, and you'll see it across the top. So uh, the, the main website for our, our channel is coalition.com, which is what we call our community. And if you if you go to this webpage, just click log in at the top right. You'll sync up with Twitch. And then it will just take you right back. And that's your tokens across the top. Right there. So these are your lifetime tokens. Don't don't worry about that. That's for levels and stuff. That's coming later. Um, but yeah, right now the the tokens you can spend on the store are right there. Yep. Oh God. Oh, that's a player. Hey, player. I did not mean to shoot you, I'm sorry. I want that. There it is. Oh! That is so good. What am I talking about? What I'm talking about. Right. So I just want to check this area real quick and see if this is the thing I was thinking of. Can you use tokens to sub? Nope. Unfortunately, tokens cannot 
be tied to any financial system. What's up, people? Oh, I say unfortunately, but we never would anyway. But, uh, hey, buddy, what's up? But no, t uh, channel tokens you can only earn. You cannot buy them. And they cannot be used to purchase anything of financial value. The whole point of tokens in the channel is that it's, it's free to play. We, we don't want people that... We wanted to have something in the channel where people that never gave me a penny can still fundamentally participate in. And that's what channel tokens are. Can we get a key off Ko's Discord? Nope. Oh, you can get a key off the main Discord, I believe. The the once human Discord. But no, the only the only places you can get keys in this channel are if you hang out and watch. We do a giveaway every hour. That's just a, a random, normal giveaway. And then uh, tomorrow morning, we'll be putting more keys on the token store. So you'll be able to buy them off the token store with channel tokens uh, tomorrow morning for a limited amount of time. And then if the devs give us more keys, we'll do more giveaways, but they've already given us a huge amount. So I, I would assume tomorrow will probably be the last. Yep. We'll have given us like 600 codes at that point. About. Okay, so this is definitely the area I was thinking of. Because if I'm not mistaken, we can run down like a route to get to something at the bottom of this area. But I didn't have to do that for the main quest. How, right, how do the regular giveaways work? Uh, in just a little bit of time, you'll see uh, something pop up on your screen if you're on PC and also in chat. I will also tell you if a giveaway is running. And at that point, all you do is type a keyword in chat and uh, you're entered. Didn't mean to uh, invade your office here and then kill you. My bad. That's my bad. It's no longer a requirement to come here since you activate the anchors in other areas now. Yeah, that's true. Which is, you know, that, that just makes me think even more. They really need to add a quest to this area because this area is awesome. <laughs> And they should put one of the things you have to do at the bottom of that area. Boom. When's this game coming out? Q3 of this year. God, there's so much good loot here. Let me in! No! No! What is these? There's like two containers in there. I am angry. I am angry. Okay. Do you know what, what time Co is doing the watch party for Fallout? Not yet. We're still nailing that down. It'll probably be like uh, morning. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, let me see here. There we go. Okay. So this area. Oh, did they? No, no, there. Is that it over there? Oh, did they just take it out? No, there it is. Oh. There is still some. Okay, so as long as they reactivate the quest in this area, then we should be fine. Because the quest would tell us to get the Rift Anchor. And that means we'd have to come down here. Okay. So yeah, they just need to turn the quest back on here, and it should be just fine. Cool, cool, cool. Is there any reason to get these if you already have them? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, I just got loot. Answered my own question. Beautiful. All right, now we're gonna go to, let's go to here. Oh, I can't go there. All right, let's just get out there. We teleport home. Nice. Oh, you know what? I, I mentioned this last beta, but I'll, I'll go ahead and say it again. I like the premise of not being able to warp to locations if you're not near a teleporter. But the problem is that you can teleport to your home base whenever you want from wherever. And you can teleport from your home base wherever you want. So what they've done 
is they have unintentionally added a 10 minute cooldown teleport to anywhere on the map with extra steps. So I feel like it would be far more intuitive if they just gave you a global cooldown of teleport anywhere you want on the map any 10 minutes from your location. And that way you just could skip the step of going back to your base and teleporting out. That wouldn't save you a loading screen, that would save you clicks, that would save you time, and give you the exact same thing. So, I feel like they should do that. I feel like that'd be a little easier, you know? A little bit more intuitive. Clutch Gatorade says they want you to go to your base. That's true, but the problem is you can just warp, you, like when you're using it like this, you just warp to your base and then you immediately warp out. So you're not actually doing anything in your base. It's not like you're going there to do things. You're going there specifically to warp somewhere else in the world. So for that, I mean, it, you know, it's not like it, for, it would be different if they like forced you to be in your base for a minute or something, which actually, actually is an interesting idea. If they do want players to be forced to go back to their base, it would be kind of cool if when you warp to your base, you couldn't warp out for like 60 seconds. Warp sickness, exactly. You got warp sickness and couldn't warp again for, for a minute. And it's like, in that case, you're already in your base. You can't do anything for a minute. Might as well do some banking and do some breakdowns and build something maybe, right? Like that could be a kind of cool way to foster interest in that. Especially from people that may normally not be into that stuff. Cause they're like, I got time anyway. I might as well do something, right? Interesting idea. I like that myth game stream. People would complain? Well, I'm complaining anyway. Look at me bitching into the ether. So, I mean, people will always complain. Funny enough, people are whiners. They're just gonna complain about everything anyway. So, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> yep, that's okay. Red Dog says, you shut up, you. <laughs> okay. Hey chat, did you hear that? Oop. I mean, I will say, I kind of, I'm considering a sniper rifle. There are many times that I think a sniper rifle could be really useful in this game. Hey, Brandon, what's up today, buddy? Oh, so much stuff in here. Guardian Angels, I really appreciate you asking for all these clips to give to the devs for suggestions. Uh, one thing to run by them, Guardian Angels, is um, I would be happy to meet with them if they ever want to talk about that stuff. Yeah, if, if you want to float that to them. I have a little running list of random suggestions that I can toss over to him. Nothing major, of course, but you know, little stuff. Aqua says, I feel like I asked this. I think you might have, Aqua. I think you might have. And in which case, yeah, it's totally fine. Better fishing UI, please. Oh, they're already working on that. Fish fishing has already made huge strides since last beta. I'm I'm sure it's got a good way to go. Yeah. Brandon and yeah, you enjoy you enjoying this game too? I've been having a great time with it. I've been having a great time with it. 
Hyperemi says, I mean, Ko is the best beta tester. Oh, dude. Uh, well, funny enough, I'm actually doing consulting these days. Uh, I have clients, which is kind of fun. One, one of the things that I do for uh, game developers, uh, indie game devs as well, is uh, we'll schedule meetings with them, and I will stream the game for them privately. And I'll treat it like a normal stream, where I just normally complain about everything I see. And the benefit of that is the dev gets to see that before it's live. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've, I've already already had some very eye-opening discussions with some smaller teams where they were like, we can't believe we missed this. And it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of times, especially with smaller teams, you, you're so committed to delivering the product that sometimes the forest isn't seen for the trees. Like, obvious stuff can be missed because you're so focused on, on making sure the other parts are good. So, it's, uh, yeah, it'd be helpful for them. Mm -hmm. Snowman says, seems like a typical playtest. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, what's up, Vandal? How you doing, bud? Why am I mining with an axe? Because that's how real men mine. I also use a shotgun for fishing. And a small knife for deer hunting. Yep. Hell yeah, brother. Check the buffs on the axe. I think it mentioned nighttime bonus. It did. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what uh, Holy Puppy was showing me. I'm just grabbing some of these on the way up because I know we're, we're running out of copper. So good to grab some of this on the way. Can you relocate your base when you're far away from it and not just to walk miles with your building up? So get this. This is awesome. So this game gives you three different types of bases. The first type of base is a super easy to deploy forward base. That's a base. Boom. I'm about to do this area. I just put this base down in front of it. I can now respawn here. I can use it for basic crafting. It's great. It, it's super cheap. And you just tap the T key and you can put it down wherever you want. Awesome. Your second base is your server base. And that is this base right here. That's my entire base. If I wanted to, I could just pop it down wherever it turns green. So I like, I don't know if I can do it here because we're kind of close to a stronghold. But anywhere I find that I want to, that, that this turns green on, I could just click and my entire base plot would be moved right to there. Done. And then the third crafting thing we haven't gotten to yet, I am very excited to do it, and it is called Eternal Land. And that is one of my goals. I have two goals this beta test. One is to explore Eternal Land, and the second is to get this. Because this transfers over to live. If you get this set in the beta, which is only cosmetic for the record, then it gets, uh, it'll, it'll, you'll have it on live. So I'm not sure how to get it yet. Um, I think I have to do like login rewards and I think there's some treasure hunter stuff. I don't really know. Oh, here we go. So there's, there's all sorts of stuff you can do to get it. What is all this? What is all this stuff? Mining. Yes. 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 Oh. Complete all chapters to decipher the final prize? Okay. Oh. Haven't done that one yet. Motorcycle and other two-wheeled vehicles move a thousand meters. Okay. Gain 10. Cool. Defeat any enemy at Broken Delta 20. Cool. So am I getting... I'm getting these for completing them? Maybe. Oh. Oh, and these unlock each day. So it's been open for four days. Well, that's cool. Is that how it works? Or is it main story? Oh.
Wait, are we choosing? We're not choosing, are we? But you get both. Okay, that's a little weird. Yeah, they should change that. You should just be able to click anywhere in the top area instead of only on one of the icons. It's a little weird. Um, but That's cool. Great. I, di I didn't even know that section existed, so... Now we have 17 of 50. Um, so it looks like you'll be, if the way that this works, you need 50. So it looks like you're going to get, just by logging in, you're going to get 30. Easy, easy. And then the last 20 you have to get by completing various things in here. That's pretty easy. Okay. Pretty easy. You didn't click three. I don't, I'm not done with three. I need the activator. I haven't done that yet. Yep. Anyway. So my two goals are to get that armor and to um, do the Eternal Land stuff. I, I really want to I want to fully fundamentally understand how Eternal Land works, and uh, and experiment with that a little bit. Because anyway, going in going into the what we were talking about earlier. So the three different base types. You got that little guy there. You've got this base, which resets every season. So this game is going to work in seasons, and then after every season, your character and world get deleted. However, there is a third base type, and that is called Eternal Land. And Eternal Land is a giant building area that lasts between seasons. So you've got like your cool little intro base, and then you've got your seasonal base, and then you've got your forever base, which is cool. Um, and again, I haven't even seen the forever base stuff yet, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing what that means and what that is and um, how it works. Like, I, I don't I don't know any of this stuff yet. I'm looking forward to exploring it. Hey, Arky. What's up, Arky? Are there actually any enemies in here? Where is everybody? Oh, there's another quest? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, look at this. Let's see what this is. Cool, man. Oh, we got enemies. Hi! Dude, where did this... Where did this cool music come from? Normally it's like dead silent music. Is this a little loud? I was going to say it is a little loud, isn't it? I'm not used to hearing music in these areas. Um, Did you hear that? There we go. Did Fixed. You hear that? Why was that a red outline? Don't know if I like the seasonal gameplay like PoE. I actually think the seasonal gameplay in this could really work. Because one of the things that I tend to do in games like this is I tend to play them, make a giant base full of resources, and then never play them again. Because there's no real reason. Like, one, like you know, it's like, it's like a Subnautica playthrough or something like that. It's like you, you, you get everything you want and then you're just done. But what's interesting about this game is, first of all, you'll always have the Eternal Land. And second of all, you're the interesting thing about this dry. game is, in a weird way, the fact that it's a free-to-play live service style game could really work in its advantage. And that's and I know, that feels weird to say. But the fact that this is going to be here every season, where there's going to be, like, new cosmetics, new building items for your eternal home, like, new things that you keep between the, the seasons, like, this is kind of a cool spin on the whole build-a-big-base survival style game. So I know all these people are like, oh God, it's seasonal brownie face. But keep in mind, you will have a giant persistent base between seasons. So a good way to think about it is not like, it's not like PoE where the whole world is reset. A good way to think about it is you have a home base in Eternal Land and like different realities you're like venturing into. But you always have this big base that you can come back to every season. And what's even cooler is if I'm understanding this properly, Every season, they'll be adding, like, new mechanics, new building items, new things to put in your base. So every season, when you return, 
you can earn a bunch of cool stuff to bring in to your eternal base and like update it and upgrade it with the new stuff. And then, you know, you leave for a couple months because you're done with the season. And then a new season comes out and you get more cool stuff for your base and more new mechanics. And then you upgrade that and then you wait for two months for the next season. So it's, it's that kind of thing. It's kind of cool. Iron Poseidon says, so your base doesn't really reset. No, again, you're, you have a seasonal base, which exists in the world that gets reset. But there is a second type of base, the eternal land. I haven't gotten to yet. And the eternal land unlocks throughout the course of the story. And once you've unlocked it, that base, which is like in a different dimension, that base lasts forever. That base never gets deleted, no matter if the season resets. So that's that's where the whole system kind of comes together. But you know what? I'm going to stop talking about this because let's get to the Eternal Land stuff first. So I actually know what I'm talking about. Not that I ever know what I'm talking about, but you know what I mean. Um... Two subjects have been taken to waiting area for basic examination. Okay. Experimental material. Pan fried fish. That sounds delicious. I'm going to eat that right now. Thanks. Lunch. Okay. Can I lose this main quest tracking? Can I turn this off? I don't think so. Okay. The whole map system's a little wonky right now which is fine whatever where are you sending me over here oh down there maybe okay This game gives me such a Defiance feel. It's like one of the first times since Defiance that I have felt like a game makes me feel like I'm playing Defiance. And for those who don't know, Defiance was the first game I ever streamed on Twitch and I loved it. It was like one of the best introductions to Twitch I possibly could have had. We had an amazing time. Had, had like giant guild groups and we just played together for like 12 hours a day. It was a, it was a magical time. What server mind? We are on USC if you'd like to join us. Oh, here we go. Give me something good. Give me something good. Why, thank you. Oh, it's not a blueprint though. It's the weapon. I don't want the weapon. I want the blueprint. I can like jack it up. Still not a bad weapon. Pretty gun, chat. Oh, we got a bunch of new mods. Yeah, hold up, hold up. Um, let's do nine percent damage. You're already at nine percent damage. I don't, I don't think we're going to do too much. We, we do crit. No, we don't need crit rate. We need crit damage up, not crit rate up. Uh, we'll keep that where it is. That's fine. Do you remember when Defiance said the game world would affect the TV show? Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> they had... Dude, the whole idea behind Defiance was so good, but I feel like it was way ahead of its time, and it was not on the right network. Like, the idea behind Defiance was great, but... Sci-fi was just not popular enough at the time to to do something like that. But it was such a cool idea. But I think if they actually had like a mainstream show that they brought back from the depths and did something like that too, I think it'd be awesome. Imagine if like a new series of Stargate released on a major network and then they made a Stargate game like Defiance. Like that's what I'm talking about, man. Like that, that would be, that's where I feel like it would work. Like bring back an iconic franchise and then tie in like a really cool game to it. Oh man. Woo! <laughs> Amazon could get away with that now. Well, Amazon doesn't make good games, so I don't think that would work. Ouch. I wish I could say differently. I hope, I hope one day we can not say that. 